Hello everyone, Tim Petrie, NDSU Extension Livestock Marketing Economist. Today I'm going to visit with you about the cattle price situation and outlook, particularly as it pertains to backgrounding. In other words, what are calves worth at the present time and then what are our expectations for, uh, for calf prices when they're backgrounded in January, February, March, whatever it might be. A little disclaimer here, I am doing this on uh, uh, November 9th and uh, prices are changing as I speak and so depending on when you listen to this prices could change and then you will have to take that into consideration. So this time of the year usually producers are making the decision of should I sell calves put them on a truck and and wean them on diesel smoke going to the auction market or should I put them in the lot and try to add value to them? Unfortunately for um, some of you at least maybe many of you this year that decision has already been made because you're short of feed and are saving those resources for the uh, cow herd and are, and are able to background. I do encourage you keeping as many cows as you can because uh, we expect prices to continue to increase for the next several years so important to keep that uh, cow herd but if you would happen to have access to uh, feed resources just because feed costs are high doesn't mean that backgrounding is not profitable so if you have feed and space available you certainly should consider backgrounding and uh, there definitely is potential depending on your cost and Brian Parman is also providing information on budgeting and uh, and some break-even prices and so on so I do urge you to uh, watch his slide deck as well. So here are some backgrounding price fundamentals just some overall things that we're going to consider some of these we're going to cover in more detail but just kind of to set the stage both corn and fed cattle prices are important in determining feeder cattle prices and they're the two most important factors and uh, corn prices are high they're six dollars at western North Dakota ethanol plants twice as high in some cases as they were last year and hay prices are also high because of the drought that we had in North Dakota and in one of the severest droughts in in history but uh, on the other hand, fed cattle prices are the highest since 2018 and are expected to continue to go up. We have a smaller calf crop that's supportive to feeder cattle prices. And uh, looking at the April live cattle futures, which uh, is something that feedlots consider when they uh, buy backgrounded calves, April feeder live cattle are up at 140. And so there's a good demand for over 700 pound steers and and uh, June live cattle are and uh, August are off a little bit which might have affect the lighter weight calves but anyway uh, uh, feedlots want to buy weight when prices are high so there's a really good demand for backgrounded cattle and, and that will continue because corn will likely stay uh, at these levels and so uh, uh, both corn and cattle prices are volatile and they are changing again as we speak and more on that in a minute. So it's important for you to com compute those costs and develop budgets that Brian is going to talk about and do your own uh, penciling. And also since the, both the corn and feeder cattle market are volatile, you'll certainly want to at least consider some price risk management on uh, some of the calves if not all of them. Here is a chart on Omaha corn prices and uh, corn prices have been quite volatile as I said before. I like to use Omaha corn prices because that's where there are a lot of feedlots. Uh, Nebraska over to Colorado and back to Iowa that buy our backgrounded calves to finish and so uh, corn is a, certainly uh, an important a part of the equation and the other thing is when we change corn 10 cents a bushel we usually change fall calf prices a buck in the opposite direction so we have that uh, opposite relationship going on with 
corn and feeder cattle and you see how volatile the corn market has been this year just the cash market and you know it has inched down there in the last a couple of months but still higher than last year but again that does not mean that we can't background calves because uh, simply we have to look at uh, at all the other factors what are calves worth and what are expectations for uh, feeder cattle coming out this slide I think helps depict that opposite relationship between feeder cattle and December corn and uh, are there some potential for maybe some price risk management as we go along if we can get on some of the rebounds and when the futures occur but again the opposite relationship is evident I talked about May before the green here are closing corn futures prices and then the black lines are the high loan and close for the day for January feeder cattle and and the corn is the Dees corn futures contract and nearbys and so uh, there in May you see corn shot up up there to 635 a bushel and correspondingly feeder cattle declined you know they were up there around 162 and crashed down there to 148 but then corn came down feeder cattle went up and you see that opposite relationship just in the interest of time let's jump to the last month or so again we started off in October that corn and had a little rally there and feeder cattle down to about 154 but then as corn declined feeder cattle climbed back up to 162 or so and then uh, uh, corn went up again so feeder cattle fell and then in the last week uh, corn uh, kind of reached a peak they're the highest prices they'd had since July 2nd and they came off of those highs and that allowed feeder cattle to rebound up there to uh, January feeder cattle back up there close to 160. I do know some astute producers that background cattle that when uh, earlier there in September when the uh, futures market started falling there and you know we're in that uh, mid uh, upper 160 range they said hey I have not sold uh, steers in March at that price level for a long time and I'm thinking maybe I should pull the trigger on some of those prices so I know several that bought LRP contracts then to, to at least do some protection and more on that in a little bit as well. so the calf crop has declined for a couple straight years will decline again this year and so uh, and even probably uh, next year and so that's supportive to the overall price level again what's important in the backgrounding is the it, since it's a margin business what do calves cost me and then what are my expectations for prices but the level will be higher than we have experienced uh, for both the last couple of years and uh, so start off here with then with slaughter steer prices and uh, that's the other part of the equation on what feeder cattle are bringing and what our expectations would be into the spring again uh, when you have backgrounded cattle ready to sell in January February March whatever it might be the feedlots buy them based on what the futures price is for when they would finish them in those lots so it's important to look at those fed cattle futures uh, just some housekeeping details here all the charts I show you have the same color code so on the bottom there you see the blue is 2018 the green is 19 the purple is 2020 and the red is this year 21 and uh, so uh, you know fed cattle were really low last year the purple due to COVID but then they started bouncing back started the year the red line there about 110 below the last three years but have just gradually picked up and by June got above the last three years and have continued the march up 130 last week and the expectations are for that to continue uh, there's the uh, Dees futures up there at uh, 132 and so uh, then again what's important is for us to to look at next year and so uh, you know we see those 
you know, up to 140 there by uh, April. So those heavier weight calves that can make that market. But again, if we're backgrounding and not selling till March or April, we're interested in towards the end of the year of what uh, fed cattle futures will be. And they're back up to the 140 range there, higher, quite a bit higher than uh, the last couple years and and uh, higher than where they're going to end up this year. So that that uh, does bode well for our spring feeder cattle uh, prices that we will look at in a minute. Here we're going to look at 550 to 6 weight uh, pound calves there in uh, North Dakota at the markets reported by USDA. Uh, those markets are Napoleon, Mandan, and Dickinson. And so uh, uh, again, the color coding is the same there and just concentrate on the red line there. The movement was similar to fed cattle and we have did see improvement throughout the year up until uh, September when kind of our seasonal pattern sets in and we, as the calves hit the market and and uh, they, uh, they come off a little bit, but still they're higher than the last two years in mid-October, the last couple of years, uh, uh, way down there, just, you know, under 150 and this year, 15 bucks higher. So calf uh, prices are higher. We expect them to continue on that blue line into, into uh, following that 2018 trend and into next year. And so, uh, you know, on the average, that's what we'd have to pay more on that in a minute too, because they're the wide range in, in calf prices. But just because they're higher in last year, again, does not eliminate the backgrounding uh, situation because we have to look at what the heavier weight cattle, uh, backgrounded cattle will be in, in uh, February or March or whenever we, we sell them. But anyway, the entire cattle complex prices are expected to continue to increase. So yeah, let's go to these eight weight steers, 750 to eight weight steers and look at the situation there again from this year's price trend, very similar to the uh, other market classes that I just talked about, general improvement throughout the year by mid-year getting up to those 2018 prices and following along on the 2018 uh, higher than last year. There is a futures market for feeder cattle and so, uh, you know, looking at the uh, November, uh, uh, October futures there and uh, and uh, at, uh, at 160, we kind of expect them to hold. Importantly then is if we put those 556, whatever calves in the lot and keep them into January, February, March, what are our expectations? Here's what the futures market is trading at today, the January at 160, and then we get up there to, uh, you know, over 161 for March and over 164 by April. And so that's what the futures market is saying. And, uh, you know, right now, I think for planning purposes, I'm throwing out about a 155 cash price, let's kind of consider there a little bit above 2018 uh, and a little bit below the futures, but that's what I would consider uh, a planning price to use now. And we will look at some price risk management in a minute. And and uh, and again, yeah, we can we can uh, we can get 155 or better with price risk management. Here's the market report for last week. And from a backgrounding standpoint, I could spend a long time talking about this at looking at potential opportunities and stuff, but I've got a limited time today. And so again, these are this is the market report the average for those three markets that I discussed. Let's start with the top there where you see that uh, purple arrow going across. Uh, and uh, looking at uh, the lighter weight, 430 pound steers there, bringing 199 and their heifer counterparts over there at 430 pounds, only bringing 161. We do background a lot of heifers in North Dakota for good reason, because of that severe discount. That's a $38 per hundred weight discount over steers and a $163 
per head uh, cheaper heifers. So every 50 pounds that heifers gain on steers, uh, every 50 pounds up, they gain prices and just follow that through. They, they get uh, the margin between steer prices and heifers continues to narrow till we get down to the bottom, the purple arrow there, 950 weight steers and heifers sell for the same price. So you get the same price for the heifers and steers when they're 950, but you got 163 bucks uh, cheaper to start with on the heifers to work with. Now I realize there's some management issues with heifers and they might be a little bit more inefficient, but you got a, a wide margin there to, to work with. So uh, again, we do background a lot of heifers in North Dakota. On January 1st, we had the fifth largest number ever of of uh, heifers on hand. And so uh, uh, certainly look at that as a potential backgrounding and, and I know a lot of you do. The other thing, uh, if you go to the middle of the steer chart there, the purple uh, circle there is the uh, 550 to six weight steers, 1,353 sold last week. And you see, there's my average 166 that I showed you on the feeder cattle chart. And, uh, but look at the wide range in prices there, 147 to 180 for the same weight and grade of calves at the same market, because a lot of different factors affect calves from from the information that's provided, are they weaned or are they do they have the appropriate shots and so on. So from a backgrounding standpoint, you know, some producers prefer to to uh, purchase them down towards the bottom. Maybe they're uh, they're not weaned and don't have shots. So then they they go through they wean them and and uh, and uh, give them shots and do the other management necessarily to add value to them and uh, in the backgrounding and you know put a bigger bunch together and make more value when they come out in January, February, March. On the other hand, if you look at those $180 steers, if that's your steers that you're pricing into your backgrounding or if you're buying them, then you got to have some pretty good prices at the end because you're you're buying a more expensive calves there. So just all considerations. The other thing is there on the steers, you see that green uh, circle there. Because of high feed costs, feedlots prefer to buy weight rather than the light calves. And, and so many years we see as we moved to higher weights, to the sixes, to the sevens, to the eights, to on down, we see a discount at every price level. But this year, not much discounted at all. You know, starting with those 625s at 161, and you know, still uh, moving on down to the the 750s at just uh, 153, 155 on 800. So even got some fancy 800s at at 163 more than the the 600s and still at the 875s up there at, at 157 very similar to the 675 weights and so again the reason for that is uh, there's a demand for uh, 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 heavier weight paying for weight for for backgrounded calves and and so uh, that's again something to consider in a in a backgrounding pro the here's the seasonal price index 10 year seasonal price index for uh, feeder cattle heavier weight seven to eight weight feeder cattle and you see what this is in an index. So if you go across from one, that's an average price for the year. So if the red line is above one, it means they're above average prices for the year. And if it's below one, they're below average prices for the year. So the seasonal pattern is now from November into uh, March or whenever we might sell them that the seasonal pattern would be some decline. Now, I know the futures is showing better prices and uh, that's the expectation. But again, th this is kind of a, a seasonal risk thing that we uh, need to look at. And, uh, you know, hindsight is 2020. We know about 2021 and so on. And, and but now let's look ahead to 2022. Uh, I'm sure the market's going to continue volatile. A lot of issues with drought and and what our corn price is going to do and fertilizer prices are are 
going straight up and so how much corn is going to get planted next year so the closer we get to spring planting and that could be by March the planting intentions report comes out and so on so and we get into next year and what's the Brazilian crop and the other everything that affects corn prices they're going to remain volatile and that's going to mean feeder cattle uh, remain volatile so I think uh, if we're backgrounding cattle and and uh, may want to think about some price risk management uh, particularly the later on that you, that you go out there and so there are some things that we can do to uh, help mitigate the risk and sleep better at night uh, possibly could do a cash forward contract with a feeder cattle so we have the price locked in there are video and internet auctions that price uh, cattle for delivery into future months we do have like we already mentioned the CME futures and a corresponding options market where you have strike prices and so on for feeder cattle if you're familiar with using those I'm going to highlight livestock risk protection here today the USDA has made some very nice changes in livestock risk protection in the last year to make it much more usable and like I mentioned before I I'm aware of a number of producers that never used livestock risk protection before that have done it already this year for their backgrounded calves so uh, you know just uh, you are familiar with different ones and the ones you might feel the most comfortable with might be part of your marketing plan Here's March feeder cattle futures again, and then in the black and the CME feeder cattle index, which is all seven to nine weight feeder cattle sold at markets reported by USDA. And that's what the uh, feeder cattle futures closed out them when the March feeder cattle closed there the last Thursday in March, the two will be the same. But there we are again up there close to 161 for March feeder cattle futures. And uh, and so, uh, you know, if you would like to use the futures market or use of it, uh, that's what we can do at the present time. And, and uh, uh, you know, the basis along those I-94 markets is about par. In other words, 800 pounds tiers when the futures market closes and with that cash settlement price tend to be about the same again have some discount up there along highway 2 over the high 94 i-94 markets at a couple dollars to take into consideration so again just visit with you a little bit about uh, the changes that have happened to livestock risk protection the uh, uh, subsidy rate has increased quite substantially for many years it was 13 percent and now it's been increased to depending on your coverage level 35 to 55 percent and that's what's triggered more use uh, this year and even triggered use for calves but it's too late to use LRP for the for the calves being sold now but still time you can do February March April contacts that I'll show you in a minute and and I'll show you the subsidies the other thing is one uh, kind of a uh, uh, restraint from using LRP in the past is you had to pay the premium up front and now you don't have to pay until uh, maturity like other crop insurance here is, uh, you know, uh, last night this came out, was valid for the t until this morning, and new one will come out this afternoon. And again, whenever you listen to this, there LRP uh, contracts come out about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, and then are valid until 9 the next morning. You have to go through your livestock insurance agent, which is your crop insurance agent. But uh, here's what's available now for March. Just, March 7th is maturity date and again it just goes keeps every day it, it moves out a day and so uh, the top coverage price available was 159.84 again I said let's consider a 155 planning price but we could have locked in 159.84 would have cost us three dollars and 83 cents uh, I like to say that since this is insurance we don't have to buy the highest coverage level important that you compute your break-even price and Brian's gonna visit with you about that I just did a budget today and uh, you know uh, with some 550 dollar a bushel corn and and uh, 165 feeder cattle going in and uh, my break-even price on that came out to be about 149 
And so, you know, if we just want to cover our break even, you're going to need to work with your lender about this too. Lenders are uh, very conducive to using LRP because everything is known up front. So go, go on down there to second from the bottom. You could lock in uh, 149.84, still 84 cents above your 149 break even, and you can lower your premium uh, down there to uh, $1.26. And so uh, reduce the premium, still have some protection. And uh, again, uh, futures, uh, March futures closed there at 6140, uh, and uh, you know, which is above this. So something to consider. And then uh, LRP is also available for heifers. The uh, and if your cattle are coming out in February, there are February contracts. Could have done a, for steers. The highest is 159.25 at a cost of 342. But you can again go down, get lower prices for lower premiums. There's the one I just showed you in for uh, for uh, March 7th. Also available into April, even into May, and on through however you want to do it. And then going down to the heifers. Uh, heifer offerings are 10% less than steers, so we could have been in that 143, 144 area again and could go below that if we wanted to for uh, uh, to, to reduce our premium. So uh, I know that's a quick go through. Uh, again, computing your cost and and uh, do, developing a budget very important and there is risk out there particularly with the corn market we saw how volatile the corn market can be and then how volatile the feeder cattle market so you know flex flexible marketing plans that maybe include some risk management may be uh, something to consider so uh, with that I'm going to uh, break away here and urge you to if you haven't done so to listen to the other speakers as well and if you do decide to background uh, uh, good luck to you <music>